I'm Hugh and Hook, and this is The Real Review, and we're about to talk to Neville Rowe, who is the chief winemaker at Shadow Tanunda, one of the benchmark, one of the showpiece wineries of the Barossa Valley, based in obviously Tanunda, uh, right in the heart of the, of the great Barossa Valley. So Neville, you're, uh, you're, you're the head in, in charge of all of those wonderful old vine wines. Um, and uh, how long have you been in the job now? I've been at Chateau Tanunda for six years, uh, just gone, um, six fast flowing years. And I've been, uh, you know, around the game for uh, uh, um, 26 or seven vintages in Australia, I think. Yeah, when, since, ever since John Geber has been the owner of Chateau Tanunda, there's been quite an emphasis on old vines and you have the 50-year-old vines wines, you have the 100-year-old vines wines, and you have 150-year-old wine, uh, vine wine as well. Uh, quite extraordinary. What, what is it about old vines that, uh, especially in the Barossa, that makes the wine special? They're, they go past that initial adolescent phase of, you know, the sort of first 10 or 20 years of um, uh, setting great crops and, and, and large canopies and struggling to, in the end of a warm, dry South Australian summer, Barossa summer, you know, sometimes those vines can struggle a little. Um, uh, and the older vines with their massive root systems and their ability to sort of tap into water from deeper in the soil, uh, their smaller crops and their balanced foliage canopies are able to withstand the 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 warm summers and the, and the dry conditions that we have and produce fruit that matures very nicely and doesn't sort of race through uh, to high, sh high sugar levels very quickly. They build their sugars a little more slowly and you just, you have an increasing level of balance and complexity to those old vine wines. Is there a particular moment or wine that you had in the past that uh, decided you on being a winemaker? When I was in uh, just at the end of high school, um, my high school girlfriend, who I was deeply in love with, um, we went for a picnic and I stole a bottle of my father's wine um, from his collection and it was an old Riesling and I really had no idea of what I was picking up. And uh, it was a, um, I, I'm not sh sure I can even, it might've been a, a Lindemann's bin or something like that. Um, and it would have, this would have been about 1984 and it was probably a seven or eight year old wine and it was divine. And I remember um, it had, it was a very successful uh, wooing agent. And, um, and I thought this wine is magic stuff. I must get, uh, I must <laughs> find out more. Um, worked wonders on my girlfriend as well. And uh, then later in life, after chasing hospitality for a few years and, living and working in Sydney and so on and are wanting to get back and uh, do something more agricultural. Um, I'm a sixth generation Australian farmer um, without a farm, so I'm a pretty frustrated farmer. And uh, it was a conversation with my very wise grandfather um, about what I should do next. And I used to um, take him a bottle of wine and we'd, we'd taste it and, and discuss it or argue over it. And he said, you know, I, I think this is a good thing for you to do. You've got a lot of passion for it, but promise me one thing, you're supposed to have gone to university and you never have, so you have to go straight to university and learn about it before you do anything. And I remember backing out of uh, his driveway in my HT Holden with a bench seat, sort of looking over the over the bench seat to back out and think, nodding, going, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Neville, I can see from the background there that there are barrels behind you. It's the there's a tasting counter behind you. It's the recent, recently refurbished tasting room, I guess, of Shadow Tanunda. Uh, the amount of effort and work and money and, and dedication and love that the Geber family have poured into what was essentially a derelict building when they bought it is quite astonishing. It's an amazing achievement. Uh, what's it like to work there? It must be quite special, the history of that place. It is. There's a, a long list of winemakers uh, with some some pretty big names um, who've been who've been here um, uh, over many years, and uh, it's it's fantastic to. You know, one of the great things I think is this is a, a winery with 
a real authenticity and a real history to it that you're you know I'm, I'm sort of being involved in in the next chapter in in this this long story um and it's um you know to be part of a brand that has meaning and and substance and a and a place in the world is um i think a yeah it, it gives you a, a a great it informs you you know in what you do at the tasting bench and in and in vineyards and and the way you make the wine and the chateau speaks strongly and i believe that uh of all the wineries that had been called chateaus in australia it's the only one that is still called a chateau and there's a good reason for that isn't there there is a good reason yeah yep um uh we had we in the handback of uh, french terms of course chateau was one of the 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 terms that um uh Australia was to hand back along with champagne and burgundy and so on. Um, and uh, we had, we were able to prove John Gieber, the owner was uh, able to prove that um, he had grandfathering rights over the term Chateau because for 130 years, it has been a continual wine producing Chateau um, in the classic sense of the word. And that, uh, we had sold our wine in Europe, in the EU, uh, as Chateau Tanunda for that entire time, um, including, you know, Chateau Tanunda brandy being the um, the official brandy to the AIF in the First World War. And legend has it that one of the um, EU court judges who sat in ruling over whether this Chateau Tanunda could have grandfathering rights over the term Chateau, had a record of his grandfather being nursed back to health in the, after the First World War by this very fine Australian spirit from Chateau Tanunda. Uh, so that was a, a feather in our cap. And uh, that, um, uh, you know, that we, we, are, we proudly state that we're the only uh, non-European winery who can use the term Chateau in the whole of the European market. So Neville, thank you. Um, I'm about to sign off there. I'm going to say um, goodbye and thank you for coming on the, this uh, interview. Neville Rowe, Chief Winemaker of Chateau Tanunda, Barossa Valley, one of our top wineries of the year 2021 on The Real Review. Thank you very much, Neville. Thanks, Huon. Thanks all.